a couple other small little things that got to get installed, and then we'll start to wire up the router and the VFD. Those are gonna be the next two steps. All right, so we got everything completely finished here with the machine. I've got it all set up. I've got it all ready to go and tucked up where it needs to be. Now, the next thing that's got to happen on this machine is I've got to do all of the computer coding. I'm switching out my computer that I've been using for one of my old desktop computers. It's going to come out here. It's a little bit stronger. That means though that I'm going to have to completely reflash that computer and completely set it up from scratch to run a CNC machine. So I will be doing a whole nother video about that uh, once I get that computer all up and running. And then hopefully that'll show you guys how you set up the um, software side of a CNC machine. Anyways, I'll go ahead and show you guys around the table and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I know I skipped a lot of like the actual work and instead I'm just kind of showing the end result and a couple of things periodically. Um, otherwise this video would be hours long if you were to watch me uh, do every single thing here. But like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below in the comment section and I will answer them as quickly as I can so that if you are building a table like this, uh, hopefully you'll have some uh, greater success and it'll be a little quicker than what this took me. All right, so starting from the top here, uh, you can see the arm that holds the torch and the lead for the plasma cutter itself. And then it bolts into that Z axis there. This is just made out of some scrap one by one. There's a whole video in the frame video that shows how I built that, but it's a pretty simple way to do this. Now, some plasma cutters, you can buy a long enough torch so that you can run this through those little plastic covers and then run it up and make this a lot cleaner. Uh, I don't have a long enough torch and I can't find a long enough torch for sale that allows me to fit over the whole length of this table. So I went ahead and just did it like this. Not the cleanest answer, but it works and it's simple enough. Everything else like the router runs and everything else runs along the tracks. Down here, we've got the two different Z axes. You can see I've got the plasma cutter on the left, the router on the right, and the router's got the dust shoe on it there, as you can see. And then you can see that the router bit would be down here beneath the you know, broom-like thing on the dust shield, and then this is where you'd plug in your dust collection system. Now, when this thing is functioning, both of these two tool heads are not gonna be down low enough to the workpiece. So there's no danger for like this melting or catching fire, because normally this thing's gonna be maxed out all the way up as high as it goes up here, while the plasma cutter's out doing its thing, and then vice versa, if I'm routing, the plasma cutter's gonna be all the way up, and that's gonna be the end of that. So there should be no interference between the two of them, um, ideally. You can see I've got the two motors mounted on the Z-axis, the two Z-axis, and then the only one that has a limit switch on it is the plasma cutter, and it is the floating limit switch that's back here behind this plate, so that you can see when it hits the ground, it contacts the limit switch, and that's what tells it it's found the workpiece. Plasma cutters do that repeatedly throughout the cut process as it does new pierces, so that's the only one that really needs a limit switch. The other one doesn't need one, and I'm gonna just rely on the soft limits in Linux CXC, the software limits, to keep these both within their parameters. And then for the router, before you start a piece, I'll, you know, you set zero based on wherever the piece is on top of the board, and then that's how you do that. Anyways, behind the C-axis, you can't really see it from this angle, but we've got the plate that we built uh, powder coated and then there's a total of four sliders up here that slide along these linear rails and then there's two limit switches back there back behind the plate that contact on the edges and then you'll see it from the other angle but the motor for the x-axis is back there everything is kind of tied together all in a bundle of wires back behind it you'll see in a second and then ran through the tracks now the last upgrade that i did was adding this spoil board so for a router, you need to have something to secure your workpiece down, and the table that I had with the slats on it for the plasma cutter doesn't support that kind of operation. So I added on this spoil board here on top. Now, I made the spoil board removable so that if I was just to do plasma cutting, I can just quickly pull the spoil board off, put it underneath the table, do my plasma cutting, and then if I need a route, I'll just put the spoil board back on top. All I have for this, I took some pieces of angle iron, some scrap angle iron I had down here, drilled some holes through it, and welded on some 3 8 inch bolts onto the back of those, and then a few wing nuts up here with a hole drilled through the spoil board that pinched the whole thing down. That's for all of these. The ones, on the, the ones on the back of the board are the opposite way. Instead of having the bolt coming through, and then going through the wood, and then just a wing nut on top, I used a same 3 8 inch bolt, 
and I welded a wing nut onto the top of the bolt like this and then there's uh, holes with nuts welded on the back there so you just screw the bolt through the hole to pin it down into place back there. The reason why I did that was because I don't lose any space up here by having the wing nuts exposed and visible. I can still put on a whole 4x4 sheet and I can still get the whole 4x4 work area. However, if I were to have the bolt sticking up in the back on the very back of the sheet, I would lose a couple of inches of work area. So I did it that way. That way when I pull the spoil board off, I don't lose any work area for my plasma cutter. Now the router, the router will inevitably lose a little bit of work area. It's just a nature of the beast. I wanted to use pieces of wood that you can just buy pre-cut and that way you don't have to go buy a full sheet of it and cut it down. Instead, I can just go buy a pre-cut two foot by four foot or four foot by four foot piece and then it'll fit perfectly onto this. So a little bit of a compromise there. So you do lose a couple of inches of work area on the router, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna do as much routing as I'm gonna do uh, plasma work probably. And the last thing you can see I added up here is the emergency stop switch. This is a remote style switch, so it's got its own little wire and plug and this can be moved around if I want. So if I ever choose to move this table somewhere else in the shop, I can relocate this switch anywhere I need to uh, to make it the most accessible. For now, I put it down just right here so that as the piece is going and I'm monitoring the camera or I'm monitoring the computer back there or I'm monitoring the work piece, this is a nice easy place to click the switch if necessary. So that's just mounted down here on the lower left. Or over on this side here, you can see this is where I keep the plasma cutter. I have a 240 volt uh, outlet drop right here. So the plasma cutter can plug right in to that outlet whenever I'm using it. And then there's a piece of uh, armored cable that I had left over that gives power to the router um, if I should use that. So I've only got one 240 volt, 220 volt outlet right here. So if I'm just switching between the tools, you just unplug and replug in whichever tool you're using. Simple enough to do that. There's also an airdrop here that provides the air for the plasma cutter. Now, over on this side here, you can see this is one of the Y-axis sliders. The other slider looks exactly the same as this one. It's just on the other side of the table, obviously. You can see up at the top of this slider, I built this little plate here. This is what the limit switches contact. So this plate at the very top that's black in color, this is for the limit switches. You got the slider, you got a sticker obviously, a couple of limit switches here with another plate on the front and on the back for those limit switches to impact. And at the very bottom, you've got the gear reduction drive assembly uh, down here, pulled in nice and tight. Now, I ran most of the wires through this little channel I made, but I didn't think about how these were going to look when I was running these. So like this is just a big bundle of wires that runs down behind the gear reduction drive and then runs into that track along the bottom rail here that we had from the first build and then into the control box which is in the very back corner of the table. Now this isn't the cleanest solution, I agree. If I were to redesign these sliders I would design some kind of tube or channel or something for all these wires to run down to make this a little bit cleaner but I did it, so that's what we got, and I don't feel like rebuilding these again. So that's what we got there. Yep. And then you can kind of see these little plates up here for the limits, which is the impact. The rest of the wiring, like I said, runs all the way down here to the box, and then the box is where everything plugs in, and then the VFD for the spindle is sitting right next to the box as well, so you can visually see the status of that. And then as you guys saw on the box as well, there's status lights for the different things inside of the box that show the status of the relays, whether they're activated or not, and then the status of all the different power supplies, which is gonna make troubleshooting if say something happens and I lose, like something doesn't turn on when it's supposed to, or yada, yada, yada. That's gonna make troubleshooting a lot easier. I'll be able to see if the box is the problem, if the computer's the problem, or if it's the router or spindle or the plasma cutter itself that's the problem. So that's gonna make troubleshooting a lot easier, I think, back there. You can see back here, I ran most of the excess wiring along the very back of the table. There's some dead space back here where there's no water table and no spoil board, and that's where the excess wiring, the hookups for the plasma cutter, the hookups for the router power and stuff like that go. Um, that keeps it nice and clean. The dead space is because the gantry, 
needs to go somewhere and you can't get any more usable work area out of it so that's just the extra dead space for the gantry to sit when you're getting out these far reaches of it and then you can see these nuts here um, that screw or unscrew into those pieces of angle iron that we've got down there and then back here you can see the back side of the uh, z-axis x-axis whatever you want to call it uh, back there I got two stickers on that one because it's symmetrical and it makes my OCD feel good And then you can see most of the wiring is ran through this track back here So that as the x-axis moves along it this track picks up and moves along with it And then the far side motor that wiring is ran underneath this piece of plate here that way It does not move and get spun around as the x-axis moves So that wiring's there this wiring's there and then everything else runs along this side here Pretty clean, I think so. Um, all right, so that pretty much completes this video. Like I said, that's just a quick little overview of everything that you can see, all the different stuff that we did and the changes we had to make to this in order to get it to have both a plasma and a router capability on this CNC machine. Overall, I think this is a lot cleaner than what I used to have before. Now there's like actual plugs, everything's a little bit tighter and tidier, tidied up a little bit, and it makes it look a lot cleaner. Just the reality of it is, this isn't a production level machine, so these don't have all those nice little covers and pieces of plastic and stuff that hide all of this wiring like you would find on like a Torchmate or on any of the big production machines that come with a lot of those excess parts on it. This is a really simple design, uh, done that way on purpose, and very easy to build at your own house if you choose to. Now, like I said, the next video is going to be the software stuff. I will hopefully get to it next weekend and knock out that video uh, in better quality than the last one so that you all can see how to set up a computer from scratch to run uh, Linux CNC and to run both a router and a plasma cutter. So that'll be coming out next. And otherwise, that's going to complete this video. I hope you guys like it. Like I said, make sure to put any questions or comments you have down below, and I will be sure to answer them as quickly as I can um, once this video is published. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.